recently had the pleasure of sitting down with our 44th President of the United States of America, Barack Hussein Obama. While he was out promoting his health care reform initiative, I requested 30 minutes given the scope and detail of my inquiry. They said I could have 20. 20 minutes. 1200 seconds. Not a lot of time to question the President about one of the most important events in our nation's history. The following is a transcript of our remarkable discussion. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your demanding schedule. My pleasure. The content of your request seems like something I should have carved out a few minutes for. I should point out that I voted for you, as your promises of hope and change, transparency and accountability, as well as putting government back into the hands of the American people, struck an emotional chord in me that I hadn't felt in quite some time. Perhaps ever. I appreciate that, Charlie. The Big Bang Theory? An amazing show. Oh, oh, that's right, two and a half men. Big fan, by the way. That Chuck Lowe is a genius. Sir, I can't imagine when you might find the time to actually watch my show, given the measure of what you inherited. I have a T T-Bode on Air Force One. Nice break from the traveling press corp. Not to be abrupt to rush you, but you have 19 minutes left. I'll take that as an invitation to cut to the chase. I'm all ears, or so I've been told. Sir. In the very near future, we will be experiencing our first 9-11 anniversary with you as Commander-in-Chief. Yes, a very solemn day for our nation. A day of reflecting, and yet a day of historical consciousness as well. Very much so, sir. Very much so indeed. Now, in researching your position regarding the events of 9-11 and the subsequent investigation that followed, Am I correct to understand that you fully supported and endorsed the findings of the Commission report, otherwise known as the official story? Oh, dang it, Bobby! The teleprompter's down! What, what do we... Obama girl? Oh, damn, man! Okay. Come on, man! Everybody believe the same thing? We all know it's the same stuff? I really wish that were the case, sir. Are you aware, Mr. President, of the recent stunning revelations that 60% of the 9-11 commissioners have publicly stated that the government agreed not to tell the truth about 9-11 and the Pentagon was engaged in deliberate deception about their response to the attack? That's just infight. Mr. President, it's hard to label this type of friction as infighting or make the irresponsible leap to thorough when the evidence I insist that you examine regarding six of the ten members are statements of fact. No disrespect, Mr. Sheen, but what you trying to say? What you trying to imply? I am not implying anything, Mr. President. I am here to present the facts and see what you plan to do with them. <laughs> the folder? Yeah, this folder. Tacky, I love tacky color. Let me guess, your facts allegedly support these claims? Good guess, Mr. President. Again, sir, these are not my opinions or assumptions. This is all a matter of public record, reported through mainstream media, painstakingly, fact-checked and verified. You'll notice, sir, on page one of the dossier, dated August of 6 from the Washington Post, that the statements of John Farmer, senior counsel to the 9-11 Commission, his quote stating, I was shocked how different the truth was from the way it was described. <laughs> Yes. He goes on to further state, The Norad Air Defense tapes told a radically different story from what had been told to us and the public for two years. On page two and three, sir, are the statements, as well from Commissioner Co-Chairman Thomas Keene and Lee Hamilton, Commissioners Bob Carey, Timothy Romier, and John Lehman, as well as the statements of Commissioner Max Cleland, an ex-senator from Georgia, who resigned stating, It is a national scandal. This investigation is now compromised. One of these days, we will have to get the full story because the 9-11 issue is so important to America, but this White House wants to cover it up. He also describes President Bush's desire to delay the process as not to damage the 4 re-election did, then suspected deception to the point where they considered referring the matter to the Justice Department for criminal investigation. Mr. President, this information alone is unequivocally grounds for a new investigation. Mistakes were made, but we gotta move forward. We gotta keep 
this thing from happening to us and other nations again. Is you ignorant? Sir, how can we focus on the future when the commission itself is on record stating that they still do not know the truth? I wasn't even there. Why don't you ask those cats why they made those mistakes? I mean, instead of messing with me, what, I was the easiest person to track down? Not exactly, sir. Well, let's be honest. You're the president of the United States, the leader of the free world. The buck stops with you. 9-11 has been the pretext for the systematic dismantling of our Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Your administration is reading from the same playbook that the Bush administration foisted on America through documented secrecy and deception. Charlie. We gotta call it Charlie. My ADHD is starting to kick in. And it's making it very hard for me to understand why you're trying to draw parallels between me and the Bush Cheney regime. Mr. President, the parallels are not distorted just because you say they are. Let's stick to the facts. You promised to abolish the Patriots Act, and then voted to reauthorize it. You pledged to end warrantless wiretapping against the American people, and now energetically defend it. You decried the practice of rendition, and now continue it. You promised over and over again on the campaign trail that you would end the practice of indefinite detention, and instead, you have expanded to permanent detention of the detainees on trial. This far exceeds the outrage of the former administration. Call me crazy, Mr. President, but is this not your record? Charlie, my staff and I brought you here so you could discuss 9-11 and see if there was any information that we did not know. But it seems like you're wandering off topic. Sir, the examples I just illustrated are a direct result of 9-11. Come on, man! We gotta move forward and go through these challenging, dangerous years ahead. My president, we cannot move forward with a bottomless warren of unanswered questions surrounding the day and its aftermath. It was all in the report. I think you should read it. I have, sir. And so have thousands of family members of victims. And guess what? They have the same questions I do, and probably a lot more. I didn't lose a loved one on that horrific day, Mr. President, and neither did you. But since then, I, along with millions of other Americans, lost something we held true and dear for most of our lives. In this great country of ours, we lost our hope. Come on, man! I'm here to restore the hope. I'm here to restore the confidence in our leaders. Me! I'm here for public choice through the peaceful transfer of power. Me! Mr. President, are you aware of the number of days it took to begin the investigation into JFK's assassination? I don't know, what, two weeks? Close. 17 days to be exact. Are you aware, sir, how long it took to begin the investigation into Pearl Harbor? Again, like two weeks? Close again, sir. 11 days to be exact. Are you aware, Mr. President, how long it took to begin the investigation into 9-11? Man, you know what? All I saw all day were people on TV about 9-11. I, I felt it was like three years. It was a very long time, Mr. President. 440 days. Roughly 14 months. Does it bother you, Mr. President, that it only took five hours for Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld, after the initial attack, to recommend and endorse a full-scale offensive against Iraq? I don't know. I have proof, Mr. President. Along with scores of documents and facts, I'd like you to take a look at. Here. What are you, a Boy Scout? Seem very prepared, Charlie. No other way to show up, Mr. President. When in doubt, over-prepare, I always say. <laughs> yeah, now you're starting to sound like the wifey. You know what? I got 99 problems, but my chick ain't one. Hit me. That's quite a compliment, sir. Oh, go ahead. Sir, I'd like to direct your attention to the stacks of documents in the folder I just handed you. The first in from the top is entitled Operation Northwest. A declassified Pentagon plan to stage terror attacks on U.S. soil to be blamed on Cuba as a pretext for war. Yeah, we knew that cat was nuts. That's why we sent him back in the NATO. I wouldn't be so certain about that, Mr. President. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. I mean, we could say the same about you. The next document reads, Declassified Stage Provocation. Now, honestly, Mr. President, I wish I was making this stuff up. I'm certain you are familiar with the USS Maine incident, the sinking of Lusitania, which we all know brought us to World War I, and of course, the most famous, the Gulf of Tonkin incident. Come on, Charlie! What, you think I'm ignorant? Of course I know these things. It's all ancient history. Mr. President, it has been often said those who do not know history are doomed to repeat it. And I concede to you, sir, these events are the past. Come on, man. Times have changed. No argument, sir. I'm merely inviting you to acknowledge some credibility to the pattern or the theme. Case in point, the next document in your folder. It was published by the think tank Project for a New American Century. And it's entitled, Rebuilding America's Defense. And it was written by Dick Cheney and Jeff Bush. To quote from the document, sir. Future, uh-huh. Transformations. 
the bring his revolution, the change, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like to be a long one, an absence of catastrophic, yeah, catalytic event, like a new pearl. I, I can dig that. Touche, sir. Your thoughts on this statement, Mr. President? Come on, Charlie. That's just bad judgment. And a bunch of crazy coincidences. Interesting angle, sir. Nevertheless, Vice President Cheney didn't stop there. In the early 2008, Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Seymour Hersh and MSNBC both reported that Cheney had proposed to the Pentagon an outrageous plan to have the U.S. Navy create fake Iranian patrol boats to be manned by Navy SEALs, who would then stage an attack on U.S. destroyers and destroy the Hormuz. This event was to be blamed on Iran and used as a pretext for war. But does any of this information worry you, Mr. President? Should we just ignore it until these realities can be dismissed years from now by our children and ancient history as well? Of course this worries me. You sitting here trying to imply that 9-11 was some kind of inside job. Mr. President, I'm not suspiciously implying anything. I'm merely exposing the documents and asking questions that nobody in power will even look at or acknowledge. And as I stated earlier, I voted for you. I believe in your message of hope and change. Mr. President, I have come to you specifically hoping for change. A change in the perception that our government has not yet made itself open and accountable to the people. These are your words, Mr. President, not mine. These lives of thousands were brutally cut short, and those left behind to suffer their infinite pain are with me today, Mr. President. They are with me, in spirit and flesh. And the message we carry will not be silenced anymore by media field mantras insisting how they are supposed to feel. We're fighting for them. For eight long years, what can be thought? What can be said? What can be asked? You know what? I could dig your passion. And I could dig your conviction. But you cats are just messing around with things y'all don't understand. Y'all 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 don't understand we're trying to protect you. Mr. President, I realize we're very short on time, so please allow me to run down a list of bullet points that might illuminate some reasons why we don't embrace the warm hug of federal protection. Yeah, go ahead with that, Charlie. Please keep in mind, Mr. President, everything I'm about to say is documented as fact and part of the public record. The information you are holding in your hands chronicles and verifies each and every point. You got five minutes. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, first, on the FBI's most wanted list, Osama bin Laden is not charged with the crime of 9-11. When I called the FBI to ask them why this was the case, they replied, there's not enough evidence to link bin Laden to the crime scene. I later discovered he had never even been indicted by the DOJ. Number two, FBI translator Sybil Edmonds was dismissed and gagged by the DOJ after she revealed that the government had foreknowledge of plans to attack American cities using planes and bombs as early as April 2001. In July of 2009, Edmonds broke the federal gag order and went public to reveal that Osama bin Laden, Al-Qaeda, and the Taliban were all working for the CIA up until the day of 9-11. Number three, the following is a quote from Mayor Giuliani during an interview on 9-11 with Peter Jennings for ABC News. I went down to the scene, and we set up a board at 75 Bourbon Street, which is right there with the police commissioner, the fire commissioner, and the head of the emergency management. But we were operating out of there when we were told that the Wall Street Center was going to collapse. And it did collapse before we could actually get out of the building. So we were trapped in the building for 10, 15 minutes, and finally found an exit and got out. Walk north and take a lot of people with us. Who told them this? To this day, the answer to this question remains unanswered. Crazy, crazy. This cat is crazy. He's just nuts. How you got some oats? You know who I'm with? Well, for Brimley. He used to do all those oatmeal things. Oatmeal, nuts, fish sticks. <laughs> Kanye West. <laughs> Fish sticks. 360. Reported that the mysterious. You know, Beverly has been as much commercial as that Brooke Shields. Didn't she marry that drummer from dancing? No, 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 to see the night. And if you want to find him with me, I can tell you what it's like. Got to be out of the mouth to see the light. And if you want to find him with me, I can tell you what it's like. In training exercise in North Carolina. We could call them the Sarah Brothers. Play some Stephanicon. That was awesome. You know what? Brad Garrett. That kept us like, he was, he was in, he was in, uh, Everybody Loves Raymond. Then he did a little crazy show that nobody can find it. Anybody can find me a copy of the first session. Morning of 9-11, number seven. 
World Trade Center building. Anybody can find me a copy of the first session of Till Death, man. I gotta find that. That was good. You know, Till Death, and then he did the regular Till Death. I think the first Till Death had Vicky, Vicky Lewis in it. That was what? What the heck happened in that show? Supposedly, in that show, he had two kids, a boy and a girl. And then, yeah, no, one, no one can explain to me what happened to that one. It was like, like 10 episodes or something. And he did not exercise that power. Three months after 9 -11. And it was good. And no one knows what it is. It's like, this is the most baffling thing in the history of all television in the world. Is that they can't find this thing to save their life. It didn't even come out on an on a, on a extra reel to tell them nothing. I can't find it at all. Like, it's ridiculous. It was an awesome show. That show was better than Till Death. See, I don't think Barry, this one, put the old one in. Legends on an all-terrain vehicle in October 2000. Well, whatever happens to that show, good times. You know, good times like JJ and all those people. I mean, what, was it, what, they figured out, was it so racist that they had to take it off the air? I don't even get that. I don't make no sense. It was a great show. The great said, good times, any time you need a fail, good times, any time you need a friend, any time you want to run a mess, I get hustled, I get hustled. Seven, over 20 minutes before it fell at five. Keeping your head up a water, breaking away if you can, temporary layoff, good times, easy credit remorse, gradually surviving, arrogant little child life, good times. Hey, we lucky we got a do 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 And that this plane did not have airplane fall on it. Of course, that just reminds me of what's happening now. Martin was in there. Bob Arson. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. You know what this? Dave Chappelle. That cat was funny. Come on here! <laughs> Come on here! What did the right hand say to the face? It'll show little real impact damage and a spark. Smack! <laughs> uh, Charlie Murphy's brother was Eddie. Eddie Murphy. I live a lot of good. I travel each and every high oil. Yeah. What's more than this? Thank you. This is genius. Everything went south after that trance thing. Yeah. You know what? The plane is 30 miles up. And when it got down to the plane, is I mean, come on. She had a boomerang with Holly Berry. Holly Berry and Tisha Campbell. Tisha Campbell. Tisha Campbell was in one of those episodes of Fresh Prince. She played that chick with all that fake hair and stuff. Yes, but in that call to do from Fresh Prince, he was in that show with LL Cool J in the house. Yeah, in the house. Debbie Allen. A 900-page congressional report on 9 11 Debbie Allen was in good times. She played that drunken girl. Janet Jackson was in good times. She went on to be in Different Strokes. Different Strokes had that dude named Dudley. Dudley, the crazy little kid, man. Remember that one episode with the dude, the pet pedophile, who, who tried to, like, get him to watch these filthy cartoons? That was funny. Oh, yeah, Dudley. Dudley was in Family Matters. Created until 2004. And even by that, played that bully. And Selma Hawkins, this Dawn herself. She was in half and half with that girl, Rachel True. True. Rachel True, man, she's hot. 
And she was in CB4. That was funny. I mean, I can go anywhere in CB4. They had every black person in that one. But I mean, no. Okay. She was in Half Baked with Dave Chappelle. In public domain. And finally, Mr. President. See? There you go. Tell me! Man, I'm going to go face with a banana patch. Man, got to get out of here. We gotta get out of the place If that's the last thing we ever do We gotta get out of the place Oh, for the better life for me than you I think this cat's gonna be finished It seems like he's wrapping it up I... You know what? CB4 had Charlie Darby And back up the official versions of the events miraculously survived Explosions and fire that we are told melted steel buildings Charlie, 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 you crazy. You know, you came all focused and prepared. You know what, no matter what I think about this stuff right here, I respect you. However, I gotta go. Do, 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 bam, bam. Yeah. Mr. President, one more second. Mr. President, I implore you, based on evidence you now possess, to use your executive power. Prove to us all, sir, that you do, in fact, care. Create a truly comprehensive and open congressional investigation of 9 11 in its aftermath. The family deserve the truth. The American people and the rest of the free world deserve the truth, Mr. President. Oops, that's the Freemason handshake. Make sure you're on the right side of history. History? I am history, son. I have my people call your people. Easy. Was that camera there the whole time? Man, I'm on my dog face to the banana patch.